hello and a happy new year. I thought I'd take the opportunity of dropping some stuff off at the tip to be able to get somewhere that I would normally have to ride to, to do some off-roading. Uh, somewhere that I don't know very well. I don't know these tracks at all. I know the area a little bit, um, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to stick the bike in the van and go out on the trails. And I also thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk to you lot about what I'm thinking of doing going forwards. Not in 2023, not in 2024, none of that, just literally going forwards. Some of it's for the next six weeks, some of it is for the rest of my life. So let's get the bike sorted, get out there, and we can have a chat. That's a good, bloody good start, isn't it? Just realised I'm going exactly the wrong way around the ride. Last minute I turned the GPS pattern the other way around to avoid massive long climb at the end. What a knobber. Wow, that is the most convoluted gate I have ever come across. That is very, very confusing. And over there is a massive quarry and behind me is Bristol Airport and I would throw the drone up in the air to show you, um, but I can't because of the restrictions of the airspace. But on the northern outliers of the Mendips, and this would be a good opportunity perhaps to tell you, while still being shaken all over the place, <coughs> um, to discuss probably the most important aspect of my plans going forward, um, probably the one that I'm gonna see the biggest returns from, and that's from giving up drinking, or to put a more positive spin on it, being sober. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, you'll know very much so that at the best of times I've enjoyed a drink and sometimes at the worst of times I've needed a drink. And that has certainly been the case for many decades really and I did give up for five years before and it wasn't that much of a challenge. And in fact, it was that experience that has made me decide to do it again. Not for five years though, going forward. It may well be a topic I delve into in more detail because it is quite an important one to me. But I've been inspired, not just by my own experience, but also videos made by Chris Opie my friend Jimmy Watkins, another YouTuber called Patrick De Lorenzi, talking about the benefits. And, you know, I probably agree with Chris Opie more than the rest of them in regards to the fact it's not some sort of magic bullet. Uh, it wasn't last time, um, and I'm not expecting it to be this time. But, and Chris Opie said this also, and it really stuck a chord with me, is that it gave in the mental strength and the ability to deal with the issues that <coughs> he was masking with drinking. And that sounds more than familiar. In fact, this is familiar too. I've been here before with the gravel crew. Just gotta make sure I pick the right path. Yeah, we came up here last time. Proper bridle way. So yeah, whilst I'm possibly not in the same mental place as I was uh, the last time I gave up drinking. But I had a lot of personal things I had to deal with, tackle, confront. These are broader, they're the same things that everyone else is dealing with at the minute in terms of cost of living crisis and um, all the rest of it. And the fact that the work on the house has had to come to a stop um, for a couple of reasons, really. Um, not least because of money and the increase in the cost of everything but also just the workload at work not allowing me the energy all the time and that's something I seriously need to have a very very good look at but stopping drinking should in fact put some money back in the coffers because suffice to say one of the biggest problems I have is that a I have a huge capacity for drinking alcohol in terms of volume but also uh, that I don't get hangovers. It would seem, according to an amazing book by Professor Nutt, that 3% of the world's population doesn't get hangovers. And of course, that's societally seen as a cool thing, you lucky get. But actually, 
in the grand scheme of things, that is not cool. Um, it's, a, it's a really bad thing, um, trust me, because obviously uh, those of you who get really bad hangers will know it has the ability to stop you um, when you're going to have just one more. It's always the last one, isn't it? So that's the big one. That's the big thing. And it's not dry January and it's not not drinking for 2023. It's definitely going forwards. I basically, in the last three decades or so, have basically pushed my body to what I consider to be its absolute limits. Just like these are my absolute limits off road at the moment. Phil Cavill's book, The Midlife Cyclist, basically shows you the research that tells you that after the age of 50, it's really difficult to do anything dramatic to your body physiologically. And so I'm 46, I'll be 47 in 2023. And so, well, there's your answer. I've basically got four years to kind of make some sort of big difference. And the major, major keystone to this is drinking. So that's that. Tell you what, I actually think it was easier riding up here. These stones are like ice. Something else I've done before, and I'm doing again, and it really helped, is the intermittent fasting, uh, which is, most of you will know this by now, uh, but it's essentially 16.8. I just checked like I was at a junction then. Don't know if you noticed that, but you can't take the roadie off the road. Intermittent fasting is where you eat in a window of eight hours and 16 hours, most of which you're asleep for, you don't eat. Usually means stopping eating around seven, eight o'clock and not eating again until 12, 11, 12 o'clock, which in all honesty is pretty straightforward. What it means is that as long as when I get to 11 o'clock, I don't basically stuff myself with breakfast um, and then have lunch and dinner, all good and I can pretty much always make do uh, until lunchtime and eat something healthy and by then I usually am pretty healthy wow this is some descent covered in leaves there is also some research to suggest as well that it has some level of regenerative um, aspects to it too which considering the abuse I've put my body through over the years, um, really is not a bad thing at all. Whether that's true or not, uh, to some extent is by the by. Um, what it does mean is that I will be in some level of calorie deficit because I need to lose weight. And well, I need to lose weight. The surefire way of doing that is exercising more and eating less. I don't think I'll be getting over that somehow. Wow, this is really mountain bike territory and I'm not even a mountain biker, let alone a gravel bike rider. Phew, this is, this is, um, what is it? Muddy, interesting, slow, uh, out of my league, anything else? Uh, Oh wow, I don't know how far up here I'm going to get. So on to this sort of more physical training really. Um, I'm doing one of them right now. I'm going to try and get out on the gravel bike just as much as I can, get some off-road experience. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, I don't really enjoy Zwift. Um, I'm at the point where I'm also thinking of perhaps just cancelling my Zwift membership for the time being because I don't really use it and when I do I don't really enjoy it. Um, I can input some other uh, training some other training elements into um, using my turbo if I really need to and that's fine. However I find riding off road is kind of like fartlek training anyway where um, it's power on power off intervals uh, at least the way I do it anyway. <laughs> Maybe better riders a little bit more consistent but also uh, in regard to needing to work on my bike handling and trying to get used to just trusting the bike off road now I know conditions here in North Somerset at the minute are pretty grim they are so slippery the the uh, mud and everything else but 
by the time we get to grit fest hopefully things will have dried out a little bit in the summer but that's my main aim really is just to make sure that at any given chance any given opportunity i'm going to get my gravel bike out like today you know heading over to backwell to use the tip and just getting the gravel bike in the back and going out for you know an hour or so just to get those skills up and to do those interval training fartlek style efforts that's the bike in regard to running i have begun couch to 5k now this is the nhs one if anyone's wondering and it's very easy um, but i haven't been running for a while because um, it's an injury issue with an achilles a sore achilles and when i'm walking up hills like this with my bike pushing the bike up which because my bike handling skills are awful uh, it exacerbates it even without running now what does exacerbate mean it means um to make things worse right uh, because i'm stretching my calf a bit more so it's time to start running again and my commitment is six weeks i'm going to commit to just doing exactly what it says for six weeks solid and then we go from there in terms of anything extra on top of that at the moment that is a bonus if i decide to go swimming it's a bonus if i do some weights it's a bonus i'll do some stretching and all the rest of it but the focus is on the next six weeks of essentially doing couch to 5k getting out on my gravel bike as much as i can and well i say sick not drinking but that's not really optional hang on a minute i've made a wrong turning I'm supposed to go up that way time to head uphill folks missed my turn I'm back where I started quarry over there airport directly in front of me this time so I have no idea how long I've waffled on for in this video but I guess ultimately all that remains for me to say is thank you for watching as usual if you aren't subscribed and all that then get yourself subscribed hit the notifications bell because plenty more videos like this where this came from and you can follow my progress and join the community by leaving a comment below let us know your experiences, your thoughts, anything you spotted in terms of my off-road riding that I could do better other than practice and lose weight. Um, that would be ace. Have a great week. See you on the next video, y'all.